I'm Jack, that's my channel. Uh, I've got tons of questions, I didn't even realise I had that many friends, let alone people that wanted to know more about me, but we're just going to get straight into it. First question here from Rex. When did you start playing guitar? Any music theory? You the man. Bro, you the man. When did I start playing guitar? I started playing when I was like, probably like 12 or 13, something like that. So, in answer to your any music theory question, not a lot, like hardly any at all, and <laughs> I'm still not that good at it, but I'm, I'm, I've got more of an idea on it now. Diego or tequila? There many trays of Diego's. The thing is with tequila, I like tequila, but tequila doesn't like me, so. And your go-to amp, favourite tone that's not from a Kemper or plug-in. Favourite tone, it's got to be like a 5150, it's just one of the best. Favourite Cosmophobe song. If you guys haven't checked it out, it's a one man, brings a satin, tech death kind of thing from Louisiana. I'd say your newest single is probably my favourite. Check it out anyway, it's on Spotify and shit. What's your day to day practice regime? Regime, consists of bro, keep smashing it once you get back on your axe. Much love. Man, my day to day, I'm one of them guys that I'll preach about, hey man, you gotta do this kind of stuff, and then I realise I don't actually do it. So I'm gonna give you a, a quick breakdown of what I think a day to day practice regime should be. You've got to stretch. You know, you've got to do all that stuff, which I don't do. You've got to practice your scales, which major, minor scale, three note for string, start at F, and you know, blitz up it. And I think as well, that helps with your theory, you know, because you can actually envision the board, and visualizing is a real big part of playing guitar. And also, one thing that's kind of not underrated, but I think people should do more of, is getting the independence between fingers. Anyone that's read the Rock Discipline, John Petrucci stuff, there's, there's tons of that in there. So I recommend doing that daily. You've got some really cool like wide stretches and stuff and you have to like wiggle about. And again, I think it's really beneficial. Just stuff like that and just learn new things. A day to day is another one that that's what will keep keep up your chops really man. So you know, I better start doing these things too. What is your riff writing process? The ones that were on Ola's video were really cool. Man. The first riffs I'd ever kind of posted. It's pretty crazy. I really try and lock in with bass drum, snare hits, trying to find a groove there. And that's kind of what I focus on is making things percussive, the same as the drums. You get a lot of people that probably listen to the drums and kind of sing a riff and kind of make it in the head. It doesn't always work for me. What I tend to do is just try and create a rhythm with the right hand, you know, like a kicking pattern or something like that, or you know, some, some chug or something like that. And, and just go from there really, I just go with feel. I tend to find myself downloading the drums every week and if I'm not feeling it, then I don't try and push it. Yeah, yeah. Hey bros, how did it feel being recognised by the band themselves when you've done the Master of Puppets tribute? That would have spun my head, but keep up the good shit bro. Yeah dude, that's crazy surreal. I, I kind of had it easy in a way, I only had to track guitars. You know, Brad and Mark had a huge job of editing and mixing and stuff like that, so they had the bulk of the work, you know, and uh, but it was really nice to just be recognised by, by Metallica, which is pretty crazy. I don't even think it's really set in now. Yeah, super surreal. And thanks for everyone watching it and all that kind of stuff, man, because that's that's crazy, man. Thanks for Brad for letting me track, man. It's fucking cool. This story from band or gig. I have one that doesn't incriminate anyone. It's kind of fun as well. Uh, there was a Decapitated show. Vogue and Rafa from Decapitated then came with us to like a gay bar somewhere where they're playing like a lot of dance music and stuff like that. It was like the only place to get a drink. Shout out Alexi, man. We just got trashed in there. It, each person was like buying rounds. The dudes in Decapitated were so drunk they couldn't get back in the van. And I was like, okay. Yeah, we're on that level, man. So before COVID, obviously. Have you heard any of my songs yet? I have. Is it called Blissful Youth? I think that is my favorite one because that has some sick licks in there, man. Props to you for them fucking stop fucking banging. What's your favourite drink? And why is it hundreds of Jaeger bombs? Now me and Jeremy have been out a lot and this is kinda of like the party trick. The quick way for people to have a good time is a lot of Jaeger bombs. So that's what I tend to do. So if you're out with me, you know it's gonna be a party. Shout out Jeremy as well, man. I got a suit. Favourite video you posted on YouTube. So I'd like to say that my favourite video is gonna be my latest videos, ones that I think I've done the most improvement on. Or if not, then I guess some of my Ola Riff videos I'm quite happy with. What's your favourite Kemper profiles? Big on Josh Middleton's profiles. I think pack three is the most complete, um, so I'd probably recommend that one over the rest of them. A lot of variety, super sick tones, mix ready kind of thing. Apart from them, um, I've actually managed to get hold of some Wes Halk profiles. Um, so you've got like a diesel tone on there and that's super killer. I used that in my last Sunday with Ola video. Man, Kemper's great. It's great, man. I recommend just everyone buy one. 
Who's your favourite YouTube guitarist? Because you want me to say you. And I would say you. I'd say you, Harry Bradley, uh, and, and Ola. But the trouble is, all you guys are my friends. So obviously that's a little bit unfair. I'm going to pick someone that inspired me to start my channel and someone that I've been watching for years and I think it's kind of, still kind of underrated and that's Finoa. If anyone knows him, he's done tons of covers. Minimal effort in terms of promotion and marketing. He just used to post his videos and then just naturally grow. And I love that kind of stuff and that's, that's really cool to me. That's someone I haven't met, I haven't spoke to and he's like an OG to me so. Or favourite solo just riff, not song, riff specifically. Oh, what? Why'd you ask me such a hard question? Um, I'll just pick one up like off the top of my head. Oh my god. Okay, it'll be something in Serpent's Tongue, or it'll be Beyond the Resurrected. There's like a riff like midway through. That's way too hard, man. I can't answer them questions. Actually, I think I'm going to do a different video on this, so stay tuned. And JB might be involved, so we'll see. Which riff slash, slash song made you want to lock yourself away in practice? So for me, that was Jason Becker. You know, I listened to the Petrol Burn album religiously, like every day. I'd say that the title track Perpetual Burn was probably one that, that made a big effect on me. I was like, I've got to learn all this stuff. And you know, I tried and I couldn't do it. So, And I guess like, that's kind of in the same vein as something like Jason Richardson. I listen to the Aviator solo is one of them ones where I'm just like, man, I need to improve, I need to get better. And same thing, I, I locked myself away, tried to play it, and I can't do it. You know, spur of a moment, and they're the two that come to mind. So, dream supergroup of metal musicians. Okay, There's, I've got like a, a go-to, which people just laugh at because it's all silosis related. So it'd be like Jamie Graham, vocals, Josh on guitar, Craig Reynolds on drums. You know, that's like my UK supergroup kind of thing. But I guess that's kind of predictable. You've got like Conquering Dystopia. And for me, I think that is like a dream supergroup of metal musicians. First solosis moment, they've got you into them. But there was actually a shriller search for Dean Guitar. I was like, man, is this, is this guy here, Josh from Riddent. And he'd used all the recording takes from Conclusion, the whole album. They like recorded all the sessions and stuff. I was hooked from that day. I was like, dude, this, who's this guy, Josh, man? He's crazy sick. Here's a question for David. Why don't you ever chug your low beast short? You. Any tips on growing the channel? I'm going to start making videos of my own soon. Okay, so I kind of feel like I can offer some some wisdom on the gap between zero subs and getting to a thousand. You know, kind of set something that's routine and manageable. You know, my time, I don't have a lot of free time. I feel bad because I'm not making videos and stuff like that. And here's a cool tip. You know, if you're involved in the community and you're active, you, know, you kind of grow just naturally. A question from Will. Why the lightning or master of puppets? Master of puppets on this one. Will you marry me? There's no rings on these fingers, man. Then how about, what is your favorite key to play in? You know, Phrygian, Harmonic Minor. We're talking like modes and, uh, and like stuff like that. I guess Lydian I like writing in, and I like the sounds of them obscure ones, like Hungarian, the Marty Friedman stuff, or the stuff that like Wes Hauk does. Where can I buy your album? Man, it's gonna be a long time. I need to get writing. One day though, one day. Bro, oh, it's from Flo. Who's your favorite guitarist besides Josh Miller, of course? Okay, so Josh and Dimebag are always at the top because they've made such a difference to either me as a person, my playing, um, focus eyes apart from that, Wes Hauk is probably my favourite player, uh, you know, Jeff Loomis, Keith Merrow, then all them guys there. Doom or Final Fantasy? Final Fantasy. Metallica or Megadeth? Megadeth. Sugar or Gojira? Gojira. And I'll tell you why. Because Gojira the first live band I ever saw. How long have you been playing? Are you self-taught or have you had any lessons in musical studies? Do you like video games? If yes, which ones are your favourite? I really dig your style, love you playing man, keep safe. Sick man, thanks for the question. So I've been playing for like over 10 years. Uh, are you self-taught? Um, I, I did go for a period where I did have lessons with a, with a guy where we just used to jam songs that I would have liked to have more theory, more formal training. But as I said, there's a lot of positives that came with that and I'm where I am now. Do you like video games? Okay. Yes, I like all them RPGs like Dark Souls and shit like that. Really dig the style of playing. It's really cool to hear as well, man. Some, you know, I've actually been able to promote my playing, which is awesome. Okay, what's your opinion on potatoes and your favorite potato dish? Also, it'd be cool to hear what your five grooviest riffs you've ever heard are. Gonna be fun to see what questions everyone comes up with. Hopefully this will be a fun one. What's your opinion on potatoes? Very good. Favorite potato dish? Anything, anything with potato in is good. Man, I'm from the UK, we just fucking we put potato with everything. I don't think I can name, because I'll just end up naming loads of silos of shit and whatever else. But I'd say five groovy bands. So when you say grooviest, I always think someone like Pantera, which is like a given. Trapalion always come to mind, because they got that song called Sick Boogie Murder or whatever, and that's hella groovy. Something like Lamb of God. Zeraf come to mind as well, if you guys have heard of them. Uh, they got some groovy stuff. After the Burial, just naming bands which I think have good riffs. 
Maybe, maybe I should do a video on this as well. What's your favourite, at least favourite subgenre of metal? My favourites are like death, thrash, melodic, uh, tech, all mixed into one. Least favourite? Folk metal or something like that, I hardly listen to it. Some tips on improving accuracy picking and fretting. It's something I've seen a lot of players struggle with. So picking for me is always about good technique. You do whatever is comfortable for you. Now the way to get accurate picking is to keep your movements small. And there's a lot of good courses online. You know, if anyone's watched Cracking the Code, Troy Grady, he does great picking tutorials and stuff like that, and he really explains it. Um, but my basic approach to stuff like picking and, and keeping it clean and stuff like that is focus on your muting. And I do a lot of my muting with my palm, which means I struggle with doing one of the picking pick slants. I can't remember which one it is. Upwards pick slant lane, maybe? But I tend to find if you use good technique, you played for a while, you, you kind of do these pick slant in and these different picking techniques anyway. You kind of do them subconsciously, and it's really just focusing on that on them techniques, you know, playing to a metronome, that kind of boring stuff, constantly chipping away at it. A really good one for fretting accuracy would be Rock Discipline. Just do the warm-ups. Which solid state power amp would you use with your live rig? Solid state, if you wouldn't want to go over Kemper because of the price. The only thing that comes to mind when, I, when people say solid state to me is old dime amps, you know, like the old Randalls. That's kind of, you know, I don't know whether that time has passed now. You know, there's so much more on the market. Like the Boss Katanas and stuff like that, they got a really good name. A lot of the tones I use are probably from tube heads. But that's probably what I'd go for. I'd even recommend, was that even the question? Power amp, I don't know. Well, I just took that solid state amp. So yeah, I'd say I like Randall or something like that. You know, I'm kind of, I'm a big dime fan. I like the old dime tones, so something like that. Or if it's new, get a Katana. Katana's got great, great sounding stuff. Do you have pets? I love animals. Yep, so I've got a dog called Ozzy. Take him out and he likes me throwing the ball and him just going and laying next to it. And that is his game. And we play that hundreds and hundreds of times. So I have to just keep walking backwards and forwards all over the park, but it's good. When did you start taking guitar seriously? I got my Dean from Hell on my 15th birthday. Me being serious then is very different from me being serious now. I've only got serious this last year. Which kind of sucks because that feels like the last 10 years was not focused enough. You know, I think we all feel that way. I wish I practiced more, that's all. If you had to play another guitar brand other than Ibanez, what would it be and why? This Ibanez neck is the best I've ever played out of anything. So if I ever found something that was better than that, I'd be like, oh my god, that would blow my mind. Some of the best guitars I've ever played, uh, an ESP, uh, I played an M2, and that was killer. That was probably one of the best guitars I've ever played. I really want to try Solar. I kind of like the idea of working towards something and being able to represent a company, which is good. Pizza or burrito, which is good, because they're both pretty damn good. <sighs> I had pizza this morning, so it's got to be pizza. Wow, that was a lot of questions. I didn't realize I'd had that many friends. Appreciate everyone checking out. I might even do another one of these. I quite like talking. I didn't think I was going to be that good at it. So let me know what you think. I'm not going to do all the normal YouTube shit. Smash that notification bell. But I don't know what the fuck to say. Just do anything. Do whatever you want. Alright, sweet word of man, this guy.